beautiful preaching not harsh words beautiful preaching and talk to them reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious so we have to ask them friend where is this word trinity mentioned in the bible and believe me i have been reading the bible for quite a long time since my college days and i have not come across this word trinity anywhere in the bible anywhere neither have i come across even the concept of trinity that almighty god is one but he is three in one even i have not found that concept whether you read the book of genesis of the bible or the book of exodus or leviticus or numbers or deuteronomy joshua judges ruth first samuel second samuel first kings second kings first chronicles second chronicles ezra nehemiah esther job psalms proverbs ecclesiastes songs of solomon isaiah jeremiah lamentations ezekiel daniel hosea joel amos obadiah jonah micah nahum habakkuk zephaniah haggai zechariah malachi gospel of matthew gospel of mark gospel of luke gospel of john acts romans first corinthians second corinthians galatians ephesians philippians colossians first thessalonians second thessalonians first timothy second timothy titus philemon hebrews james first epistle of peter second epistle of peter first epistle of john second epistle of john third epistle of john jude and revelation and any of the book of the bible this word trinity neither the concept of trinity is mentioned anywhere what was the concept of god according to jesus christ he said in the gospel of mark chapter number 12 verse number 29 shama israel adonai elohainu adonai ehad hero israel our lord our god is ahad the word there hebrew word is ehad same to arabic word ahad qul huwa allahu ahad jesus said ehad we say ahad which means one not three in one only one and who is he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we ought to worship only him only him you worship anybody besides him it is not accepted we have another christian background muslim now with us and he was from protestant background and he protested a lot looks like a wwe wrestler but don't get mistaken a very soft person very nice person His name is Hamza. Previously he was called Sudin. So may I invite Sudin here to share his experience of his journey towards Islam, brother Sudin. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters i welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah my name is Muhammad Hamza previously i was known as Sudin Kumar i had a christian upbringing and i was a man who used to not sleep without drinking at least 3 pegs of rum and at least smoke 20 cigarettes a day I did not have any purpose in life. I did not know where I was heading. All of this just two years ago, until I embraced Islam. From then on, my dear brothers and sisters, it's been a wonderful experience and a great journey. First of all, I discovered and learnt who is God and what His attributes are. I learned that there is only one God. He is the creator of the heavens and the universe, and He alone deserves to be worshipped. My quest to learn about God 
began during these days when I was drinking, when my parents used to tell me, do you know you should not drink? Okay, you should not do, you should not smoke like this. You come drunk every day at ho home after work. Okay, the quest began when my mother always told me, read the Bible, go to church. Read the Bible, go to church. So one day I said, okay, let's see who is this God. I picked up the Bible and I started reading it. And I wanted to understand what the message of the Bible was. At the same time, I was in college and I had uh, one of my friends, his name is Sheikh, and uh, he is a Muslim, Alhamdulillah. He, he used to tell me, every time he used to meet me, he used to tell me, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God. So I used to say, what, this fellow, what is this fellow man? Every time he sees me, he all, all, we, all he has to say is only this. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God. So, I, you know, after some time I just left, left from him, I used to run away from him. Whenever I see him, I used to run away from him. And then later on, uh, I started reading the Bible. And <clears throat> after I started seriously reading the Bible, I came to know, I found many verses which was talking about the worship of one God. But then when I looked at you know, Christians around me, in my family, you know, my cousins and everybody, they were propagating something else and they're worshipping something. So the inquisitiveness inside me grew. It grew to an extent that I started pondering. I started pondering and I thought this is not true. This can't be true. They, the Bible says something and, the, and these people are doing something else. Some of the verses I want to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that I found in the Bible, like Brother Gaurav was mentioning, Moses, peace be upon him, he says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6, verse number 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. Again, it's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse number 11, Almighty God says, I, I even am the Lord. There is none besides me. And there is no savior besides me. And then, again, the message is repeated in Isaiah chapter number 45, verse number 5. I am Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. And again, he says, in, in the book of Isaiah itself, chapter number 46, verse number 9, he says, I am God, there is none else. And I am God, there is none like me. This really got me puzzled. Then I went up to my cousins who used to go to church every Sunday and I asked them these questions. They said, no, this is not like this. You have to believe that, you know, you have to intercede through Jesus. Okay. By the way, we were all Methodists. Okay. Protestant, again, has been divided into another, few, another hundred sects. Out of that, we were called Methodists. And we used to believe that we pray through Jesus Christ to Almighty God. That was the belief. And then I saw another set of my Christian family members who used to worship photographs, idols, and all that. That again got me puzzled because I had read the Bible. I read the uh, Old Testament which said in the book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verses 3 to 5, uh, and also in Deuteronomy, chapter number 5, verses 7 to 9, where Almighty God says, Thou shall have no gods besides me. Thou shall not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness, of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth, or that is in the water beneath the earth. Thou shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, thy Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Proving that idol worship is prohibited even in the Bible. Then what, what are these people doing? And these are the few verses that I picked up from the Old Testament. Besides this, if you read in the New Testament, there is the same message of, of worshipping one God has been propagated. Some of the verses that I found was, is, in, is mentioned in Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, repeats 
exactly what Moses, peace be upon him, said. He said, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. And then he said, in John chapter 14, verse 24, and the words ye hear are not mine, but the, fathers who, but the Father who has sent me. Again, it's mentioned in Gospel of John, chap, chapter number 17, verse number 3, he says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This also, I mean, this very clearly, very plain English, this proves to me that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. 